All right, guys, episode three for Project FT86 Speed Factory Time Attack. And we are gonna start by going over what's going on in the car out here. And then we're gonna go into the office and look at what Paul's doing with uh, CFD and CAD. But um, if you remember last week, basically we scanned the car and we were working on solidifying the CAD model so that we can actually run CFD. So this week we've been running CFD as well as I've been working out here um, on the cooling side of things. So we'll go over all that and uh, give you guys a up close look at basically what happened this week. So basically we ended up tearing off the front face of the car and we removed the oil cooler, which was a Cetrav unit uh, double pass. And we removed their radiator that was in there previously, which had a single fan on it. We also removed all the ducting. Um, and before anyone has any questions, I, I actually believe that the ducting that they, they had was actually pretty nice. And they did a, a really good job overall of ducting the airflow through the cooling stack. So kudos to FT86 Speed Factory. I just think that the, the parts that were used for the actual cooling of the oil and the water were not the best and and that's not at fault to them it's just the available products on off the um, market are not always inexpensive or available um, so we're basically helping them out there because me and paul did that through past life so we removed the radiator and we installed our high performance uh, radiator as you can see the fans actually fit with the uh, turbo and the wastegate and Jeremy was pretty worried about that initially but both fans actually fit we're probably only going to run one fan for time attack to, to reduce some weight and to actually increase airflow through the core but it's pretty cool that both fans do fit this radiator does use a high performance 27 millimeter Denso core it is specifically designed for motorsport use and we only have a few left in stock if you're interested in one for an oil cooler, we are actually going to do a custom unit and it's going to bolt to the front initially, to the front of the radiator. I say initially because uh, fingers crossed the oil cooler we come up with will actually reduce their temp so much that we can actually install it behind the radiator, which is actually where most oil coolers reside in a motorsport environment. So their oil temps and their water temps were definitely high before we're hoping to, to fix those issues. We also have some ducting designed in CAD that we will be manufacturing for the entire setup. All right, so over here, we can actually see the old radiator and fan. So we're actually going to be using a higher performance small fan on our radiator because it, it, it will actually fit where uh, you could not run a thicker fan, which is a higher performing fan um, previously. And then this is the, the duct work, which is again, very nice. And they did a great job of uh, sealing the entire cooling stack. Um, I, I honestly hope I can do as good of a job, but I, I'll give it my best shot. This is the oil cooler that they were running. It is a dual pass uh, Cetrab. Um, we actually believe that the dual pass was creating a uh, bottleneck in the system, possibly increasing their temperatures and uh, reducing cooling efficiency actually um, there's a there's a big misconception in the market that a double pass is always superior and that's not always the case um, it can actually hurt performance if uh, there's excessive pressure drop and, and various other aspects that a lot of people don't think about but ultimately if you actually think about it the the oil cooler was this tall and twice as long so i mean it that is a long very long area for oil to flow through and cool so fingers crossed uh we end up solving their issue with a little bit better core and a better configuration uh, with a larger surface area uh, core face all right guys now that you've seen what's going on out in the shop I'm gonna take you into the office and we're gonna talk a little bit about the CFD and the CAD side of things so you guys can get a look at that.
Alright guys, we are now in the office, Paul, and we're going to uh, talk about initially the CAD model, then adding our aero components to it, uh, some data which is on that screen, and then CFD which is on that screen. Uh, there are actually three computers here for if you, continue, if you consider the laptop, and Paul uses them quite often, so I guess let's get to it. Alright, so currently what we're looking at is, this is the base of the CFD model, so when we go and develop products and run CFD, we need to have a solid model. So this is currently our solid model of the wide body FRS that is JB Auto's car. So we have the wheels, brakes, suspension modeled. If we go to add on our parts, so currently splitter, so this is the splitter setup, splitter in plates. For the, the rear diffuser, we, we went with our off the shelf unit, um, at least for right now because one, it does actually function quite well, and two, um, we're in a very tight time crunch and we can't develop an entire new system for this car. So, so that's one of the reasons why, um, and, and the off-the-shelf unit really does function. And you'll be able to see that in the CFD that we show in just a few minutes. Um, and then one of the big things that we added, everybody knows we released our uh, bigger single element universal wing. Um, not too long ago, we've also been developing a dual element, which is right here. So this is, we've been developing this for a while. Um, this is gonna be the first car it's gonna go on, um, and this is pretty much the uprights how it's gonna mount. And this is pretty much the initial CFD run of kind of how we ran it. Uh, we, we knew we were gonna make some changes to the car. Uh, so after we kinda got a baseline of what this does, one of the big things when you have front diffusers, definitely ones that vent into the fender well, you need to have a place for it to go. So we were looking at where we could cut the car, um, looking at the fenders just to see, and then so what we'll do is we will hide the initial body, and then we will throw in a new one. So this is kind of where we got to. As you can tell, we cut this out. And this is basically where the frame rail's at. This is the internal geometry of it. We also cut out the rear. And this is just to kind of clear out some space. We, we cut as much out of the fender as we possibly could to get it to vent. Problem is right here is the frame rail, so we couldn't cut that anymore um, or at all really. So that's one of the inherent problems, but we got it to perform as much as possible. The rear wing doesn't sit super high. We try to keep the wings as sleek as possible, um, low down, where they still function, sits behind the car a little bit, that helps uh, the rear diffuser. So this is kind of the CAD. And then if we move over to kind of the CFD world. So right now we're looking at post-processing of the CFD. So this is a pressure plot, which is really the coefficient of pressure, but in essence, it's pressure on the body, so red's high, blue's low. Fairly common, high pressure on top of the splitter, high pressure on the top of the windshield, high pressure on the top here. So if we go into the rear diffuser, you can definitely see that's working quite a bit. See how it's doing. This, we did run this as a full car, we did not run symmetry. So you can see there's a little bit difference on how the flow is on the underside, on the diffuser. And it works really well with the flat bottom floor. Definitely keeps drag low, feeds the diffuser. Splitter is pretty basic. Um, it's kind of designed how we'd manufacture it pretty easily. Um, there's a round leading edge. This is gonna be made out of Alumilite, uh, two different sheets of 10 millimeter. So it's, or at least currently. Um, though obviously the splitter is used to balance out the rear wing. The rear wing makes a lot of downforce. You can see our data for the single element, the dual element just is even better. Um, our single element's 300 millimeter cord. The second element is 200 millimeters, so it's definitely a big wing, makes a lot of downforce. Uh, it's pretty efficient. This is kind of why you want to vent the fenders as much as you can, this high pressure. 
uh, but kind of we're just stuck with kind of the constraints of this build currently. Now if we look at kind of another thing we look at is some streamlines. So this is how the streamlines hits the front. You can see spillage over the in-plate. The in-plate on the side helps keep low pressure on the bottom, high pressure on the top, makes it more efficient. See how the streamline goes down the car, then gets sucked back to the back, comes out the rear. And this is velocity, so we're just looking at. So the color is based on velocity, yellow being higher, purple being lower. And this is just a good way to kind of see how things are going. This is what we use to compare the data. So you can see everything across here. Um, split down. So this is all the data we look at. Then we have data graphs also with all the data. How many runs have we done? We have done 15. 15 runs. And we compare each one to see what works and what doesn't and why it works and that's how basically we develop the entire aero kit and we learn from past mistakes and improvements, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so you guys have seen what we're doing this week. Um, next week, we plan to be able to uh, give you guys some information on ride height data, which we do run in CFD, so that we can understand how the car acts at different ride heights. Uh, we will also be able to show you some images of the car at yaw, which is interesting. That's uh, one of the first times we've done that, for, uh, for us at least. And uh, also next week, we'll show you some more CAD images of the solidified aerodynamic devices turning into manufacturable models. And uh, hopefully I'll have some stuff going on out in the shop as well. Thanks.